Hi everyone, welcome to my first video where today we're going to be deriving the equations of a cycloid. So what is a cycloid? Well, if you have a circle lying on a flat line and you roll the circle and you follow one point, it will trace out a curve. This curve is a cycloid. As a quick disclaimer, we'll only be working it out for a circle of radius 1, but it's not that hard to generalize to any radius and you should try it yourself. To represent the equations, we'll be using vector functions, which means both the x-coordinate and y-coordinate will be written as functions of time, t. For our derivation, we're going to break the total equation into two separate vector functions that we'll be adding together. One takes us from the origin to the center of the circle, and the other takes us from the center of the circle to the point we're following. Also, we're going to define theta, the angle we turn, as equal to time. If you want to think about this physically, we're going to rotate the angle one radian for every unit of time. To start with, we'll consider the function from the origin to the center of the circle. Notice that the height of the center always stays the same. This height is the radius, 1. This means that y1 is equal to 1. Also, consider that the distance moved along the x-axis will be equal to the arc length of the circle. If we use the equation for arc length, a equals r theta, where theta equals t and r equals 1, x1 equals t. Now for the rotational offset. Notice that we're looking at a function that traces out the unit circle, however we're rotating clockwise and we're starting at 0, negative 1. If you construct a right angle triangle, set the hypotenuse to 1, it's easy to see that the x coordinate is always equal to negative sine theta, and the y coordinate is always equal to negative cosine theta. This means that x2 equals negative sine t, and y2 equals negative cosine t. Now we're not completely done just yet, because we still need to add the two functions together. x equals x1 plus x2, which ends up being t minus sine t, and y equals y1 plus y2, which ends up being 1 minus cosine t. 